negotiated with the Taliban. And I think some of our allies um, wish another country that they want to go to. And that's one of the things that my office is continuing to work on. And one of the things we did in Congress was to um, pass some benefits for those Afghan refugees coming to the United States. So they're not coming here with no support at all over the next couple of years as they're trying to resettle. And I think that's going to be important, as well as continuing to figure out how we get humanitarian aid to the Afghans without having the Taliban take that aid and um, use it for themselves. Congressman Heard? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, think, I don't think we handled the departure well. Um, and, and this goes back, it wasn't just the events of the last couple of months, it goes back to, to the previous administration. And, and part, you know, at the end of, of last year, there were 82 million refugees or displaced people around the world. That's doubled since 2010. So when you have that kind of pressure on so many countries around the world, adding to that makes it even more difficult. And so there was not the, the thought process from the previous administration and go into what happens with all those people we need to get out who put who put their lives on the line and their lives of their family on the line in order to help us. We should always be taking care of Very well into the next question. Sarah from Rockland Community College has a question about how American politics are impacting our relationships and actions globally. My question is, do you think hyperpolarization is doing to international relations, and what hope do you have for the future? Relations. I think it's having, is this your turn or my turn? It's no. your, uh, you're both going to get to go. So I think, yeah, take it away, Senator. You're still in office. You know, I think it's having a huge negative effect. And when, when we hear that China is looking to see if we can come to an budget agreement, um, because they know that if we don't reach an agreement, Republicans and Democrats in Congress. 50 years. For 10 years. You know, Senator, were you asking these kind of questions when you were in university? I know, I know, I, I know I wasn't, right? Um, literally, literally. I Chris, I that communism when I was in college. Every time, Chris, yeah, every time Chris and I do these, we feel embarrassed for ourselves and lucky that I we got to go. <laughs> Senator, I'll take a first shot at, at this one. Um, I, look, I think it's hard. I make sure that I always say the Chinese government. Uh, the beef is not with the Chinese people. It's definitely not with Chinese Americans. You know, what's happening in Taiwan? They would have 70% of the semiconductors in production and semiconductors around the world. If you think it's hard to get an iPhone 13 now, just wait if, if that supply chain was completely under control of the Chinese government. The Taiwanese Minister of Defense, literally this week, about that if we want the South China Sea to look in five years the way it looks now, that means we have to work with our allies in order to make sure China gets the message that the juice ain't going to be worth this. We have to all work together in order to in order to deal with this. And humans are having an impact on our environment. And the only way to solve this problem is if we work together. And so participating in multilateral organizations is not enough. Senator Shaheen, Congressman Hurd, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, you know, Chris and I, we really appreciate it. But I know, you know, the, the folks at Bridge and the college kids, you know, are we're all lucky to, to get this kind of dialogue that it's harder really, these days. Truly, truly. Senator, Congressman, you, you guys, I could listen to you guys for hours. Uh, Manu, you, you, you just, we are lucky to be working with you as well, my friend. Always great to see you. And everyone tuning in. Th th thank you for caring. This is, that's, that's an important first step. It matters so much. So please spread the word. Please tune in the more we do these things. And again, thank you all for being here so much. Uh, it means it's the political, world. everybody. Yeah, get involved, get involved, care. And model the behavior you want to see. If you're yeah. tired of people being nasty, then don't be nasty, right? Uh, because wisdom. You know, wisdom. I agree on a lot. For sure. Oh, yeah. Who knew? And, and put us in a room, we're going to solve these problems, right? Absolutely. You know? so, so anyways, so like Chris, I'm glad people care. I'm glad y'all too care in having these conversations.
Well, thank you both for joining us. Again, you know, you're always great, and, and uh, we'll try to be the model that you guys are setting. Manu, if you want to come back and join us, I believe some students are going to come on, and they're going to have a much more intelligent conversation than Chris or I could possibly lead. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you, my team. Hey, before you all just quickly run, uh, Mark, Chris, I'm just so incredibly grateful for your time always. Thank you. Buddy, you're a legend. You're a legend. Always thank good you all. To see you. Take care, pal. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see you later. Um, Thank you, Manu. Thank you.